Gord, when you arrive here, there's one thing you can't miss. It is this statue. What can you tell me about that statue? Uh, the statue is 40 feet tall. It's of Glooskap, who is our, the Mi'kmaq people's first person. And Glooskap created the people. And uh, after he created us, he looked after us, kind of uh, was always around, sort of uh, helping us. Glooskap always uh, taught us the things we need to know. It's our way of remembering our history. We have a history of over 14,000 years. Um, just archaeologically speaking, probably longer than that, but we haven't found it yet. Our last Blue Scap story is actually about him leaving. So uh, roughly a couple hundred years ago, uh, Blue Scap decided to go west. And it was foretold that when he left us, we would uh, be on our own, we'd struggle, and our culture would be threatened, and uh, our people would go through incredible hardship. Uh, some generations later, we would come back into our own, our culture would be safe, we'd be stronger and uh, resilient. Um, and then he could return. A lot of uh, our elders, they, they think that we're pretty close to the seventh generation. And maybe one day, Glooscap will soon be back. Is Glooscap common to the Wabanaki? Glooscap goes by a couple other names in the territories. Uh, so the Mi'kmaq uh, are part of the Wabanaki Confederacy, which is made up of uh, the Penobscot, the Passamaquoddy, uh, and the Eastern and Western Abenakis, uh, as well as the Wallastiok, or also known as Maliseet, and ourselves. You know, he goes by Glooscap, Glooscabe, uh, a couple other uh, names, and there's a lot of regional similarities between the stories that are told. The legends and, uh, and the types of stories, that's the, the part that's important. That's the part that passes on the, the information. So because it's an oral tradition, you know, everyone tells it, their own versions a little bit different or whatever, and they have regional sort of differences and similarities as well. Well, thanks very much, Gord. You're very welcome. Now, over to you, Don. Thanks, Don. Now, let me tell you a glue scap legend. One day, Wimpe and Glue Scap were having a challenge in three parts, and after the first two challenges, they were tied. It was Wimpe's turn to choose the game, and he brought out a great long stick with webbing at the end. And he said, Glue Scap, our challenge is to throw this moose hide ball through the other's goalposts. The first one to do it wins. It took them many, many suns back and forth. No one had scored, and finally Glue Scap thought, What's happening with my people? How are they doing without me? Are they managing? It gave him great energy and he leaped up. He threw the moose hide ball through the goal post, winning the challenge. Winpei looked at him and said, now what will you take from me for winning the challenge? And Glooscap said, give me the game. And that is how Glooscap brought lacrosse to the people. Over to you, Don. Thanks, Don. And did you know there's also a connection with our other national pastime? Because the Mi'kmaq claim to have invented an early version of hockey. Back to you, Don. Thanks, Don. Whew, looks dangerous. That's why I'm sticking to lacrosse. Throw me the ball, kids! Don Kelly, out. <laughs>